Hey everyone, welcome back to Engineeringly. In this video, you're going to learn how to create dynamic Gantt charts using conditional formatting in Google Sheets. So in case you don't have access to Microsoft Excel, MS Project, Primavera, or any of those, you can use Google Sheets to easily create dynamic Gantt charts and present it to your project stakeholders. So in this Gantt chart, as you can see, we have the task name, the start and end dates, and also the durations. So once you have all of this set up, and in case you want to change any of these duration, for example, the planning as per one of your stakeholders might require five days and the design might need six days and development of this should add one more day to this, which will be three. And also testing will require two days and deployment will require five days. So this is totally dynamic and can be changed whenever you want to make a change. So without much talk, let's get started and let me show you how to create dynamic Gantt charts using Google Sheets. So in here, as you can see, I directly pasted the data from the previous sheet. We have the task names, the start and end dates, and also the duration. So first thing first, on this first row in here, we'll have the dates from beginning of the January till 26th or maybe the end of the January in order to be safe. So for that reason, I'll just copy and paste these dates into there. We'll copy these and also paste this in here. In order to rotate the text, I'll keep this selected and go to format and here I'll go to rotation and then I'll select rotate up. And as you can see, there's a lot of empty space available in here. In order to fix that, I'll select the whole sheet from here and double click anywhere. And as you can see, everything is fixed. The next step would be applying conditional formatting to create your dynamic Gantt chart. For that purpose, what I need to do is I'll select the whole timeline from here up to here, which is E2 up to AI6. And then I'll go to format and go to conditional formatting. So this will show up. The rule in here should be a custom rule and it should be that write equal sign and open parenthesis. So in order to correctly apply the conditional formatting, we need to see at which points these dates and also the dates for the start and end overlap with each other. So that's why I'm using an AND function. So basically if this date is greater or equal to this date and also the same date is smaller or equal to this one, then the conditional formatting should be applied on that specific cell. Otherwise, it should be left blank. So basically this one is E1. So what I will do is I'll write down E and then make the row number absolute in order to make sure when we are dragging this down or maybe going to the right, the row number for this one should not change. So I put a dollar sign in here, write one. If this is greater or equal to the date, which is the start date in here, which is again in B2, for this one, I'll lock the column number. Since we are going to drag it to the right, the column number for the start date shouldn't change. So I'll put a dollar sign in front of the, the column name and write down B. And also since this is B2, the next condition should be if the same date is smaller or equal to the end date in here. So for that purpose, what I will do is again, E dollar sign one smaller or equal to the end date, which is in cell C2. Again, for the cell C2, what we need to do is we'll lock the column or make that absolute by putting the dollar sign before the column name, and then we will leave the row name free. So for that purpose, I'll write dollar sign C and then write down two. Close the parenthesis. And as you can see, it's already showing our Gantt chart in here. In order to do, do additional formatting, for example, let's change the color from here. For example, let's pick this orangish color and that would be it. And then I'll click OK. Close this. So as you can see, your Gantt chart is already looking wonderful. So if I make changes, for example, change the durations, make this duration three days. As you can see, everything moves. And the reason that I forgot to mention is that what I have done is 
for the end date, I have added the start date plus this duration. And for the start of the next activity, what I have done is I have added one day to end of the previous activity. Or in project management, we call the previous activity predecessor and the next activity as a successor. And this brings us to the end of this video. If you found it informative and helpful, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel, also following us on Instagram and LinkedIn for more project management, civil engineering, and data analysis insights and tutorials. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.